Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by the channel. Today we're going to be going over the final installation of the Micron Plus build. We're going to finish up the tool head installation, the wiring. Now I'm going to skim over the installation of Clipper, CAN bus, as well as the Clicky, because those are all well documented and available in other places online. Let's get to it. As with many of these videos, we're going to start things off with some heat set inserts so we can get into the assembly. I always apply a small amount of VP2 to the needle bearings within the secondary drive gears of the extruder. The secondary drive gear then snaps into the guidler arm. You then super glue an M3 hex nut into the extruder back plate and press fit the MR85 bearing. You can then install the shuttle, the guidler and the latch and enclose them with the mid body. Three M3 by 25 will then secure the mid body. Two M3 by 12s underneath. Apply some Loctite to the grub screw for the extruder gears before sliding them into the mid body. Two M3 by 6 and an M3 by 12 were then used to secure the back plate onto the extruder. The part cooling and hot end fans can then go in, starting from the left and working your way over, ensuring to tuck the cables through the management routes. The extruder motor is then secured with two M3 by 10s. Before tightening those M3 by 10s completely, ensure to set your motor backlash, tighten the screws down, and then check the backlash again to make sure it didn't shift during tightening. The hot end assembly process is very similar to that of a Dragon or V6. Four M2.5 by 6 button heads were then used to secure the hot end to the printed part. The hot end PTFE was then cut to stick out 6 millimeters. To prep for the tool head installation, I started by cutting the belts down to having 6 teeth per side. Two M3 hex nuts are then pressed into the top slots of the X carriage. The tool head is secured to the X carriage with two M3 by 35s in the front and one M3 by 16 to the rear. The antenna and the heatsink can then be attached to the CB1. The CB1 snaps into place on the M8P and is secured with the four screws that were included in the package. A jumper to power the board via USB is added right above the CB1. Next, we'll download the CB1 image from the Big Tree Tech GitHub and flash it to the 32 gigabyte SD card via the Pi Flash tool. Once the image is flashed, we will edit the system file with Notepad to add our wireless network and password. Insert the SD card into the Manta board and power it on via USB. Find the device on your network and confirm that you have the right IP before SSHing into the machine. Move to the Clipper folder, enter the make menu config command and configure it to meet your board's requirements. Then run a make command to flash to the board. You'll then want to run winscp, go in, find the clipper.bin folder, pull it off of your machine, rename it to firmware.bin, and put it onto the 128 megabyte SD card. Power off the board, insert the 128 megabyte card, and power the board back on, SSH in once again. You can then run the ls dev serial by id command to get your board serial. The default printer.cfg is available on the Big Tree Tech Manta GitHub. You can then add all the jumpers to put the TMC drivers into UART mode, as well as the fan voltage connectors, ensuring to remove the USB power jumper. Add the heat sinks to the TMC2209 stepper drivers, and then insert them into the proper channels on the board, as shown. 
heat set inserts were then done for the component mounts for the electronics bay. The Manta is attached to its mount via M3x8s. The SSR mounted via M4x8 socket heads. The HB tape is used to attach the Wagos to their mount. The power supply mount is assembled with M3x8s and attached with M3x8s. Everything can then be mounted to the DIN rails in the electronics bay. Then a final round of heat set inserts to finish off the skirts. I'm not going to go into detail on the wiring of the electronics bay as all of the wires are labeled. That being said, I do plan on doing up an electronics wiring diagram in the next coming days. Hopefully something that FormBot will post either to their website or their Discord. With everything other than the gantry now wired and clipper installed, we are ready to move on to the CAN bus installation. This will start with the 120 ohm resistors placed on the tool headboard, as well as the Manta MAP. Now, as mentioned, this is not a tutorial on the installation of CAN bus, so I will be skimming over this section. All of the commands used can be found at the website linked on screen. The link will also be available in the description down below. Esoterical did an excellent job of doing this write up. There is troubleshooting, there is configurations for most of the boards and tool head boards on the market, as well as very detailed steps to getting you up and running on cam. With CAN bus installed on the Manta as well as the EBB36, I then updated the CAN bus UUIDs in the printer.cfg and went through the entire CFG assigning all of the pins based on the pinout guides from Big Tree Tech for the tool head and mainboard. Now this step is very optional, but I sleeved the CAN bus cable and put some metal wire in for rigidity to make sure it doesn't droop down and interfere with the tool head. The EBB36 is then secured to the tool head via the mounting plate with M3x6s and M3x8s. All of the labeled connectors from the tool head are then plugged into the CAN bus tool head board. The CAN bus cable then connected and zip tied in place, measured for distance and secured to the rear A motor mount. The Z chain was then attached to the rear of the gantry and the CAN bus cable, Y, N stop and AD motor wires ran to the electronics bay. The CAN bus power and signal were then connected as well as the AD motor wires and the Y end stop. The screen was then mounted and connected to the Manta board. All of the required clicky CFGs were then copied over from the GitHub into my printer.cfg. The A, B, and Z belts were then tensioned to spec. With the machine working as planned, I could then move on to cleaning things up before putting the panels on.
The back panel is the only one using the stock mounting. Everything else is going to be using Zrentro's zero panels. The spool holder is the same as the one reviewed in my V2.4 upgrade video. The link will be in the description below to the printables page. The first print looked great, but I figured we could probably get a little more speed out of it after some input shaping tuning to determine our max speeds. Here we have it running 20 KXLs almost at a 200 millimeters per second max speed. As always, thank you for stopping by and checking out the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to help the channel grow. See you in the next one.